What's up everyone, it's Endymion, and lately I've been covering things like Disney being sold in the future and the Hollywood actor strike, which are of course very important issues that I will cover more in the near future. However, there's been a very startling and honestly creepy revelation going around with the resurfacing of clips of Mel Gibson. Specifically, the Hollywood actor and director talking about his distaste and rejection of many of the elites within it. Beyond this, the entire video will cover various bits of info around Mel Gibson's Sound of Freedom and how this movie might be one of the most important pieces of media released this year. Also, I'll be using game footage in the background mostly so this video doesn't get demonetized or suppressed. Anyway, to start I want to look at an article from June, which details how Mel Gibson has been collaborating with Tim Ballard behind the scenes on a new documentary surrounding the human trafficking controversy. Tim Ballard, in case you don't know, is the man who created Operation Underground Railroad. He's also played by Jim Caviezel in Sound of Freedom. Anyway, recently a video has surfaced where Tim Ballard explains how this potential new documentary Mel Gibson is working on will effectively expose everything. So watch. Got a phone call from Mel Gibson. He actually did the final edit of The Sound of Freedom. That's how we know each other, but not well, not well enough that I'd be getting phone calls. And he told me that he was in Budapest at the time. This was right hours after the invasion. And he said he supports a bunch of orphans in Ukraine and he was worried about them. And he asked if I could help get them out. So now I've got 12 from my wife. I got 13 others from Mel Gibson. And I'm thinking, okay, I got this list of kids I got to get out. Um, I told Mel, I said, you got to help me. This is going to be expensive. I won't ask you for a direct donation, but can you help me film this? You know, let's film what's happening so we can get people to understand and they can support us. He said, no problem. He helped us get set up and started filming. Four months later, what I thought was going to be maybe a documentary about Ukraine ends up being a four-part docu-series. It's almost done. It's being produced by DNA Films and executive produced by Tony Robbins. That's how crazy it got and how prophetic my wife was. When I showed up in Ukraine with a list of, I think, 20 names, the Ukrainians countered me and gave me over 10,000 names of orphans that they didn't know where they were because of the chaos caused by war. And more importantly and, and more frightening to me was the fact that I know that human trafficking is a $32 billion a year business. It's the fastest growing criminal enterprise in the world. And I also know how kids get forced into that market. And it's through vulnerable situations like in the aftermath of a hurricane, mostly in a developed country or an earthquake, or in this case, a war. This video alone inspired me to make this due to how sick it made me feel to my stomach. So this documentary, which isn't titled yet likely because they're keeping it under wraps to ensure it doesn't mysteriously disappear suddenly, will detail some hot topic issues like the war in Ukraine, human trafficking, and it looks to expose all of it. The fact Ballard went to Ukraine with roughly 20 or so names to save, but was handed over 10,000 proves how insanely dire this social media explosion over Sound of Freedom has become. There's even people trying to discredit the film with very concerning backgrounds themselves. One of these writers who denounces the film is Noah Berlatsky, who writes for Bloomberg. Noah's article is titled, QAnon and Sound of Freedom both rely on tired Hollywood tropes. Noah says in the article, and I quote, So is Sound of Freedom a QAnon dog whistle or is it just another thriller? The answer is that whatever the filmmaker's intentions, it functions as both. These narratives do little to help victims, but they can create coalitions of feeling disgust and righteous rage that connect conservative conspiracy theorists with the mainstream. That's why Trump's screening it, and that's why its popularity is ominous." End quote. Noah was very quick to say Sound of Freedom was nothing but right-wing nonsense. However, since the publication of that article, the backlash the writer has received on Twitter is nothing short of nuclear. Noah was exposed as being a spokesperson for Prostasia back in 2017. Prostasia, by the way, is an organization that looks to destigmatize and legitimize something very concerning, to put it lightly. You see, Noah Berlatsky was exposed for defending MAPS, which is an acronym for Minor Attracted Persons. It's a very PG way of saying, well, you know, I can't say the word on YouTube, but people who abuse children for their own desires. You know the word. He even said on Twitter that MAPS are a stigmatized group and that they are just misunderstood. Which is just, no. MAPS, or whatever the hell you want to call them, should be buried underneath a prison as far as I'm concerned. There's nothing else to be done with them. 
But it is telling that the spokesperson for a child abuse organization also openly protects and advocates for the normalization of people who like kids. Prostasia as a foundation says the removal of child uh, P-O-R-N will lead to more harm for children in the future, which honestly just sounds more like a threat than a statement to me. And the organization looks to destigmatize the term and make maps into a sexual orientation which is beyond insanity. But it doesn't surprise me that someone who looks like this would advocate for this sort of thing. Also, he locked his Twitter, which doesn't exactly help his case either. Anyway, as you can see, it's very weird that the people trying to suppress or delegitimize films like Sound of Freedom or the people working to expose things like this are oftentimes the very same people who splurge and love the very thing movies like this fight against. And it doesn't help when organizations like Prestasia condemn places like Tumblr for suppressing or removing map-related content. Prostasia even said in a statement, which I will now unfortunately read for you, and it says, An entire community at the ground zero of child sexual abuse prevention is being censored and it's children who will ultimately suffer the most. The foundation also claims that stigma against pedophilia is a consequence of alt-right conspiracy theorists and sexual conservatives. So, you heard it here folks, it's not MAP's fault they're attracted to kids, it's somehow conservatives and right-wing crazy people. They can't help that they like children, it's all somehow Trump's fault or whatever convenient scapegoat they can smokescreen their movement with. Honestly, the more I talk about the very organizations people like Tim Ballard or Mel Gibson plan to expose, the grosser I feel. There was also another clip that's gone semi-viral online of a young Mel Gibson talking about his early career in Hollywood and how it weirded him out. So, watch. When I came over here, I was, oh God, I was in my, my uh, mid-twenties. Right. The first time I really came over here. You know, I had a whole bunch of weird paranoid suspicions about what the hell was going on because there was a lot of stuff I couldn't understand. Right. Um, and nobody was really bothering to explain it to me. They don't. <clears throat> and, it, it, and I formed a bunch of opinions about the town and about the people in it that were like, surely that couldn't be because a whole place can't be like, you know, weird town, you know, where the stranger wanders in and and all the people are in the bar and they all shut up when he looks at him and, mm -hmm. and they tell you don't go out of the house on the hill and it's like that mm -hmm. and then you go away and you think no that's i was wrong i mean that's insane thinking i'm paranoid i imagined that stuff that couldn't be the reason for why so and so was acting like could it mm -hmm. and then you find out later on the track that you are exactly on track mm -hmm. with a lot of this stuff not specifically on no. track but that you could, uh, that some of your worst nightmares were real at the time, and you think, mm -hmm. a place like this can humiliate you. Mm -hmm. And it can be, it can either, it can humiliate you, it can be humbling. I mean, it, it does rip your life to pieces Is it? if you'll let it. Yeah. As you can see, Mel Gibson has been fighting this depravity for decades at this point. His four-part untitled documentary series has gotten so much attention from websites like Twitter that Mel's ex-publicist has denounced its existence in fear of consequences. Alan Nirub claims that Gibson has not worked on any documentary series and claims Gibson did not finance any potential documentary that would explore this particular topic. But it seems odd for his ex-publicist to say things like this when Tim Ballard himself openly claims on stage that this documentary series was not only financed by Gibson, but he helped with information gathering, staff, and equipment. So who gave Tim Ballard the equipment to help Mel Gibson with this apparently not real documentary series where Ballard flew to Ukraine to film? It seems more like Gibson's publicist is terrified of the repercussions and instead wishes to douse the fire out before things get out of control. But this is all likely just being said so Gibson can help with the creation of this potentially explosive docuseries without having Hollywood elites breathing down his neck. And it makes sense that certain groups wouldn't want Mel Gibson to make this since the human trafficking business rakes in over $34 billion a year globally. To put it into perspective for you how lucrative this is, it makes more money than the entire airline industry does every year, and it's growing bigger as time goes on. 
Sound of Freedom as of the making of this video has made almost $91 million at the box office on a $14 million budget. So the film is a massive success based on what Angel Studios spent to make it. And despite the media backlash from every conceivable angle, the film is making waves that Hollywood just can't seem to stop. Sound of Freedom had such an uphill battle towards its release as well. Since the film was shelved by Disney after they bought Fox, and Angel Studios had to buy the rights back from Disney to get the film back. Then the creators presented the film to around 100,000 potential investors to which the film gained its $5 million in funding to distribute within a two-week period. The entire conspiracy is that these elites harvest kids for something called adrenochrome, which is made from young human blood and uh, body parts like foreskin. It's used to rejuvenate the skin of older peeps did. Suddenly it's stupid and a conspiracy theory. It's clear that no matter who you are or what you've done, if you're seen with someone like Mel Gibson, you're immediately labeled far right by the press. Mark Wahlberg has been facing scrutiny for chatting up people like Gibson at a UFC tournament and it seems even people like Wahlberg have had enough. Since he sold his $90 million mansion in LA and left behind the crime-ridden city behind for Nevada. Wahlberg has been a loud voice in the fight against the woke depravity of Hollywood and in his own words wants to create a new form of Hollywood away from the elites. Now Wahlberg is working towards making Las Vegas into a place where similar level productions can happen as he found the depravity of LA to be nothing but poison for him and his family. Wahlberg has spent around $15 million on huge acres of land that he plans to build into a future studio. Hopefully his efforts lead to a new alternative that'll let entertainment be made away from the influences of current Hollywood. But it's very telling that the moment any of these powerful people, be it Wahlberg or Gibson, step out of line, they're attacked and labeled as right-wing lunatics. Because having a different opinion in today's world is no longer something that's championed. It's instead attacked and used as ammo to ruin you until you either die or fade into obscurity. And speaking of Hollywood and the actor-writer strike, Jim Caviezel was interviewed about it while on Fox News where Caviezel confirmed while he supports the strikes, he wasn't allowed to actively participate in it. Apparently SAG, or the Screen Actors Guild, didn't want the strike to be associated with Sound of Freedom due to its subject matter. So it's really telling and honestly bizarre that not only are the Hollywood execs against the film and the people behind it, but fellow actors are not even willing to be seen or attached to it. But then again, this entire controversy comes as no surprise since people like Jim Caviezel and Mel Gibson have already pushed the needle before. After all, they both made The Passion of the Christ. Which, I didn't know this, but the movie made $621 million at the box office when it released in 2004. If you adjust that film's success based on inflation, it basically almost made around a billion in today's currency when it released. So here's hoping this Mel Gibson documentary series comes to light, because if so, it could become the single most important documentary released in decades. A bombshell of this magnitude, while the world has its eyes and ears open on all things Hollywood related, from the strikes to what Sound of Freedom has done, yeah, this is gonna be nuts. This could be the bomb that shakes Hollywood to its core, but until it releases, I guess we'll just wait and see. As always, like the video to help the channel out, subscribe for more in the future, and thank you for watching. I appreciate it immensely. Have a great day, question everything, and I'll see you in the next one.